This goes out to all my people, men, women, and children who gave their lives for freedom and liberation, the People's Army of Biafra. How you want to talk, how we deem the bechi, who are drinking long if I to run around. Sit in the boot bank, catch you, who dare if I, how you going to drop the bomb and not. How you want to talk, how we be renewed all. We don't have the power, but we never say never. We have to proceed whenever they come around we put them through. So as we are here today, uh, the main reason why we are putting up this broadcast today is to tell the world where we are today. The Afro Voice International is made and is, is an, a, the media arm of the Supreme Council of Air on the people of Biafra meant to educate, to inform, and to take their friends away towards our people. Today, we are talking about the ECOSOC United Nations meeting coming on on New York here in America. Not just in New York, but here in New York, United States of America. And today, we have our special guest today, Mr. Emeka or Barrister Emeka Emeka Esiri, who is the backbone of that ECOSOC meeting, as it has to do with with uh, with Biafrans. First of all, before I proceed, uh, uh, sir, we have had a lot of word going there, here and there. Some people shouting, some people making noise, some people writing all sorts of rubbish in the social media saying that the Belier Human Rights Initiative has been deleted, that they've removed it, that they've caused a lot of rubbish against the, our human rights organization, the Belier Human Rights Organization. Please, before we go into the main thing, I want you to enlighten all their friends so that this particular, mm, I, won't, I don't know whether to call it blackmail or gossiping or something, will stop. Because many people have been asking me this question saying, is it true that the Human Rights Initiative has been delisted by the Nigerian government? Please, can you please enlighten us on that? All right, thank you very much. Um, I hope every person is listening because it appears rumor and falsehood fly a lot. And then um, if, if we keep quiet, people may accept falsehood as truth. Now, um, um, the next hearing of the case between Biafra and Nigeria is on the 16th of June. 16th of June, the case between Biafra and Nigeria will come up for hearing at the Federal High Court of Owele in Biafra land. Now, if the year human rights has been disbanded or dissolved or deregistered, then it means that, 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 it means that the hearing wouldn't have been listed for that 16th of June. So the first thing is that since the hearing is coming on the 16th of June, then that should tell anybody listening that the Belier Human Rights Initiative is still alive. Now, the next thing is this. There is a process. If an organization should be dissolved, there is a process of doing that. You cannot just wake up and dissolve an organization that is a legal entity. It is not possible. So, the federal government, the Government Affairs Commission, cannot dissolve Belier without due process of law. They, they will first have to file an action in the Federal High Court. And then we will go, they will tell us why they want to disband or dissolve the year. And then there will be a case between the year and the Corporate Affairs Commission. The Corporate Affairs Commission has to now to find the evidence why they should dissolve the year. So there is a petition written by the Carlos Group. That petition was sent to the Corporate Affairs Commission, and a copy of it was given to the Nigerian lawyers, Barrister um, Yemi Akese, a judge, that is Sam, the lawyer that is uh, advocating for Biafra, or for Nigeria, sorry, the lawyer on the side of Nigeria. And then a copy was also sent to the, uh, the presiding judge of the, of the Federal High Court. Now, these are the Biafras, Nambikalu group of um, Biafras, who now wrote this petition to our opponents, to Nigeria, to the, to the lawyers who are representing Nigeria, and to the judge of the Federal High Court. And what was their petition?
petition. They said that the, the, that the complaint of this commission should dissolve Bilie and cancel the certificate of Bilie and disband Bilie uh, so that the case between Biafra and Nigeria in the Federal High Court should die so that that case should stop. And now, what is their, um, uh, their position? That I deceived Nigeria. I didn't let Nigeria know that Bilie is a disguise for Biafra. I deceived Nigeria. I didn't tell them that Bilie is a disguise for Biafra. And therefore, why should Nigeria register an organization that should fight for Biafra, for the cessation of Biafra? This is what people who call themselves Biafras are talking about. However, the, the argument they are bringing up is a lie. Bilie is a word in Hebrew language and it means stand up. Before Bilie was registered, the Nigerian government had to investigate the name Bilie. They investigated it, they asked all around, and they came out with the, the, the confirmation that Bilie means stand up. In fact, the Contract Affairs Commission officer who signed that paper is even an evil woman. Is even an evil woman, and she was able to. So yes, every person confirmed that the name, the word Bilie, in evil language means stand up. So, and then the Carlos group, their, their, their problem is that. That the name Bilie is also it also means the actual liberation and exile. That is a stupid argument, a very foolish argument. The fact is that an acronym can mean a word. For instance, the acronym you call UNO. UNO, UNO, UNO. It's also an evil word meaning UNO. In an umbrella or UNO. Now the word IMO is also an acronym. It can be International Monetary Organization, IMO, but it's also a word in Hebrew language, IMO. So a word can also be an acronym for something else. So if B-I-L-I-E is an acronym for Biafra Liberation in Exile, that doesn't stop it from being a word in Hebrew language. So B-I-L-I-E is a word in Hebrew language, even if another organization uses this as an acronym. So if they want, let them go to court. Let us go to court. Let us know which lawyer has wisdom of God. Let us go. Any lawyer, any lawyer they want to bring, let us go. An acronym can also mean a word in a language. Check, check every, all, so many acronyms that mean words in different languages. So Bilian means stand up in Hebrew language. And there is nobody who can disprove it. If you go to Nigeria now, go to Hebrew land now and tell them, God, every person will tell you that Bilie means stand up or arise. So they, they have no, no case at all. Nevertheless, the petition they wrote is, is put under the rule of local standing. Local standing means a person who has no case, who has no right, who has no issue, who has no interest in a matter, which cannot litigate over that matter. So the organization in America and the kind of organization which wrote the petition to the federal government of Nigeria have no interest in the ongoing case in Nigeria. They have no interest in the case between Biafra and Nigeria, which the Human Rights Initiative is litigating. So they are meddlesome interlopers, that's what we call them in law. They are meddlesome interlopers, people who have no local standing, and they are busy body in a matter that does not concern them. So if the people in uh, the Biafra liberation in exile, the people who claim that Bile is their own, if they believe if that Bile is their own, then let them let them file petition in the Federal High Court or file petition in the Corporate Affairs Commission and we shall join issues with them. Simple, we join issues with them. It, it, let the people, the Biafra liberation in exile, if they claim that Bile is their own, let them come to court, let them file action, let them file petition and let us meet in court. Good. That is by the way. But I don't want to join issues with their friends. You know, I am reluctant to do that. I am reluctant to join issues with their friends because it will look like people fighting among themselves. In fact, the first the first reaction I had when I'm the Carlos group, when Iranya and the other one, one Noneni, when they signed that paper, the first reaction is that I should join them in the case. Because now that they have filed the fact that they have written and they have copied the, the Federal High Court and they have copied the, the lawyers on the Nigerian side, then they are, make, they are bringing themselves into the arena of conflict. They are something in 
law we call arena of conflict. So they are not bringing themselves into the arena of conflict. And therefore, I cannot file a motion in the federal high court and join in the Kano, join in Iranian, join one of the as co defendants with Nigeria. So they will be on the side of Nigeria as co defendants. So when we come to the court, it is in the other court, therefore, that the human rights initiative versus federal government of Nigeria, the first defendant. After the general of Nigeria, second defendant, now the Kano third defendant, uh Albia. Uh you know I take that and told us that there are all the five defendants so they, all of them will be on the side of Nigeria defending the case. And I may have to file a motion because I may have to because if I don't file a motion, they, they, they may think that we are joking. So now that they have put themselves into the arena of conflict, I may actually file a motion. Thank you very much. Uh, you hear me? Yeah, yeah, we hear you. Me? Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Fine, fine. You are, the, the next thing you are talking about is um, ECOSOC meeting. You want to know more about it? Yes. Yes. It is the United Nations inviting indigenous people. Now, I need to explain this because many times people say Biafra is not yet a sovereign country and therefore cannot be invited by United Nations. Now, the people that make this argument, I don't know whether it is out of foolishness or out of lack of knowledge. It is possible it is lack of knowledge. Now, the rule of law is an unregistered or a non-legal entity. A non-legal entity or an unregistered body can only act or sue in a representative capacity. So since Biafra is not yet a legal entity, Biafra is not a sovereign country, Biafra cannot act in the name of Biafra. Biafra can only act in a representative capacity. The case in court, Biafra is acting in a representative capacity. Believe human rights representing Biafra. So because Biafra not represent itself because it's not yet a legal entity. The, that is why the United Nations invited the Human Rights Initiative representing Afra. That is the rule. I don't know how many times I will explain this thing. Even elementary one law, law student knows, class one law student, a law student in class one knows that a, a non-legal entity can only sue or be sued in a representative capacity. Then the input is if you are not in a meeting, your representative is in that meeting. It means that you are here, it means that you are in the meeting. If you are not in, the, in a meeting, then you have a representative there. It means that you are there in the meeting. So that is what it means. If the Indian Human Rights Initiative representing Biafra attends a meeting on the for Biafra, that means Biafra is there. That is the rule. So all the people that are making noise and I don't know whether it's just propaganda or they are doing it out of no, lack of knowledge or lack of wisdom, I don't understand. But uh, well, everyone has a good level of knowledge and level of understanding. So I leave it to them. Thank you very much. If you have the question for me, I'm here. I'm willing to take the question. Thank you very much, our elbow solicitor, Eleka uh, Enokesu, for that wonderful analysis. I think you have actually made a bunch of actually good us Thank you very much. And we have someone in Japan who wants to search a way to meet you.